This video is sponsored by Manscaped. So as usual, I was going through the comments of my last video, my soundproof Black Panther shoes, just looking for ideas to make next. Got this cool arrow idea, the falcon wing. I see you, we'll get to those. But one of the themes I noticed was a lot of comments on this expandable nanotech thing I did. You know Marvel's latest technology for arming their superheroes. Black Panther's got it. Y'all asked for Star-Lord's helmet, which has it too. And of course, Iron Man's got it in his latest suit version. Like it? And it's really cool, mostly because it doesn't look that physically possible, but you know, let's try and make it anyways. Let's see what I can come up with to make an expandable Iron Man helmet that mimics the movies. Bonus points if we can make it fully metal, maybe add a heads up display, some sort of AI and a voice assistant like Jarvis. Holy shit, that's a tall order. All right, if I'm gonna make this though, y'all got a comment and idea down below for something I should make next. Thumbs up to cool ideas you see down there so I know it's popular, and a like and subscribe is always appreciated. All right, run the clips. So at first, Tony uses a robot to assemble the Iron Man suit to his body. Already pretty sick, but then he upgrades it even more to a briefcase design. So now it like self-assembles, which I think is just such a cool scene. Like when his mask drops down at the end, woohoo! Gets me every time. But yeah, then he goes on to invent one that flies onto his body, and then finally ends up with some nanotech that just appears out of nowhere, basically. Honestly, I prefer the more mechanical design though. Like, I think it's a little bit more like tangible or real. I think nanotech just looks too CGI. But yeah, let's try and replicate a few of these mechanisms, see if we can come up with something similar. And I'm just gonna start with the mask for now, cause you know, this is already gonna be really hard. But to make a mask, first we need a mold. So after a little bit of digging, I found a video showing a pretty easy way to make a mold of a human head. Basically, we're gonna saran wrap my head then wrap duct tape around it, cut it off, and fill it with foam. What could go wrong? Yo, you want to cover my head in saran wrap? All right, so like, did I show you the video? I watched half of a YouTube video on head. <laughs> yes. And now I'm trying to explain it to yes. you. Don't tape over my mouth. It's kind of the one thing you have to not do. And then you just put tape around everywhere. I wonder how it gets out of it. He skips that part. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> yeah, just keep keep going. Here we go. Hole. <laughs> Does it look cool? Dude, like I could that. just spin. Oh! Let's start the tape now. What do you think? The new type of sex ed, you wrap it and then you actually tape it on top. Demonstration of how it should work. I'm just <laughs> using myself. Jake is volunteered as the banana. Fuck it, I'll do it myself. I've lost my ears, I've lost my smell. Close me out. <laughs> Close me out! Do it! Do it! I should do a blind build test. See what I can build just blind. Probably pretty good, right? Good? Very good. Nice. All right, we're done. I'm ahead out. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Like, hey, man, nice to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet you, man. Oh, that's so... Oh, my God, I'm putting you God. You can cut a little bit, I guess. Oh, this thing. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Your hair is all good. There's my head. That's so dope. All right, well we got the mold. Now to make it a little stronger, more solid, we're gonna use some spray foam. <sighs> All right, let's just let this guy dry for a couple hours and uh, we're really not gonna have any visitors either because I'm not trying to explain that. And now we got this guy. As if this workshop wasn't creepy enough. Yeah, this is the wrong place to rob if you're a burglar. Anyways, I started by just printing a paper template mask to fit to this guy. I thought this might help me get an idea of kind of the mechanism we were gonna use to make the helmet, you know, go on and off the head. Like maybe we cut the helmet into slices and make it all like fold together, kind of like a curved telescope. So then I moved to some sheet metal. Now the trick is gonna be figuring out the whole slide mechanism and also how we're actually gonna like move the pieces and get them to slide out. I thought maybe some servo motors in the ears could be a good idea. Spin everything out kind of like a helmet visor, but it'll be like the whole helmet. And then I also thought about using nitinol, a nickel titanium alloy, which is basically temperature activated memory wire. Basically you can program it into any shape you want by heating it up super hot and then letting it set. And now you can bend it out of shape and it'll automatically return to its original shape when heated to the activation temperature. The advantage here is it wouldn't take up nearly as much space as motors and it's super simple. And in theory, you could make the whole helmet out of this night and all stuff. You could just bend it around your neck when you're not using it, you know, wear it like a scarf. Then we need the helmet, just heat it up to like 100 degrees and it'll spring up onto your head. 
And bonus, it's also super strong because it's made of titanium. Few issues though. First, the cost. This stuff is like dumb expensive. This ball right here, 500 bucks. So like a full helmet would be crazy. Also you need a design that would like ergonomically fold up and also a way to forge and mold it. But if you could figure all that out, I think it'd be really cool. Maybe in the future we'll do that. But for now, I kind of scrapped the whole sliding mechanism idea in search of a simpler method. And that's when I came across this device right here. This is an inflatable bike helmet called the Hoofding. It's actually made by a Swedish company. And basically it's an airbag for your head. So you wear this thing around your neck, it's got an accelerometer along with a pressure cylinder so it detects movement if you fall and deploys the helmet around your head almost instantly. Sort of similar to the Nanotech Iron Man uses. So I got myself one and we're gonna see if we can turn this into sort of an Iron Man helmet. But the only issue is because it's a helmet, it's only meant to be used once. So there's no way to actually trigger it without crashing it. Are you nervous? Me? Yeah. No further questions. <laughs> All right. It knows I'm faking it. You gotta want it. I know. You have to feel the passion of pain in your heart. I know. I need to. I need. I need something that's like. Uh, I need something to motivate me a little. We need it to be more real. Be more real. You know. I don't know. Like something like a. Uh... <laughs> Oh, are you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Whoa, Whoa it worked. Oh. Dude, that looks so cool. That is so cool. Pop was loud. Dude, that pop was loud. I was kind of That was crazy. It's kind of sturdy, huh? Dude, you're not supposed to. You're going to give away our whole plan. <laughs> we'll make it, so there it is, when I crash, the helmet deploys. Now keep in mind, this helmet is meant to be used with a bike, and in a more serious crash, to be like a harder jolt, which would trigger the helmet faster. But you can clearly see the helmet does deploy out of the collar, and here's some crash footage from Hoofding, and as you can see, it really is just an airbag for your head. Explodes out of nowhere, really cool but I think we can take this design and modify it to be reusable. Maybe change the color a little bit so it doesn't look like George Washington. So I remade the neck collar out of some fabric and snaps. So it can still bust open, but be reusable. Then I replaced the one-time use helium cartridge with some good old fashioned CO2. Not sure exactly why they used helium in the first place. Who knows, maybe it was an added feature. Like once it deployed, it would float us away to a hospital. Anyways, now it's reusable. I blacked it out. Here it is. Fits around your neck and you can deploy it with a push of a lever. It pops out and boom, instant protection. Not sure if it'll hold up the Thanos, but you know, maybe his younger brother or something. I like your cut, G. Maybe one day we could make a whole inflatable suit or something. That'd be kind of cool. But until then, it goes great with these new JLaser Video hoodies now available on the website. Shameless plug. JLaserVideo.com slash clothing. All hoodies handmade by us right out back. I'm actually going to sign all of them so you can get a little bit of a personal touch too. I also came up with some sweet new designs and got some more shirts back in stock. And we're doing all this ourselves. Eventually bring you guys real invention products that we make. Uh, so if you like what we're doing here, want to see some of this stuff we've made, come to stores, help support us, you know, grab some merch. All right, all right, so this is definitely some good head protection, but it still doesn't really look like Iron Man. So I'm gonna do another version. I still want this one to fold out, but the main focus is gonna be on its looks. So I thought about, you know, 3D printing a helmet, because I would still look pretty cool, but you know, it's a new year, I'm trying to step up my game. So instead, we commissioned a fully metal custom CNC Iron Man helmet. This thing is so sick too, like it looks and feels exactly like an Iron Man helmet should. You know, while we're at it, I also had them make a full metal Iron Man gauntlet as well. You know, stuck a little repulsor inside. Definitely be adding more mods soon, but uh, in the meantime, we're actually gonna give this one away. So if you want it, all you gotta do, obviously drop a like and subscribe, then hop on over to Insta, toss us a follow, and then like the pick so we can pick a winner. Actually, pretty soon though, we're gonna be able to make all sorts of metal projects like this in-house. I'm talking CNC machines, plasma cutters, it's gonna be so cool. Plus, we've got a lot of great projects already in the works that some of you guys are actually helping us make. So if you're a talented engineer who likes to make stuff like this and wanna help out, head on over to jlaservideo.com slash join the team and sign up. Like I'm really liking the community we have here, guys. I'm taking projects from you guys, and now you can help us actually make them. So yeah, hit us up if we're interested. We're also looking for video editors, graphic designers, to make even more cool merch and designs for you guys. There's tons of different creative areas, creative people coming together. Who knows where this could take us? All right, back to the helmet. The nice thing about it is it's actually already made of a couple parts. We've got the back of the helmet, the body, and the mask. 
So now all we got to do is just automate the parts folding up onto our head, which proved to be harder than I thought. Surprise, surprise. So my idea was to store the helmet kind of hanging off the user's back like a backpack. But with the push of a button, the helmet will slide up onto the user's head, the top will fold over, and then the mask will drop down just like the movies. So I first started with the mask section. This is a classic feature in any Iron Man helmet, and it's actually pretty easy to do. All you need is one servo in the helmet and some lever arms to connect the mask right above the eyes. Just JB weld everything in place, and boom, your mask moves just like the movies. <laughs> oh! <laughs> But you know, we ain't stopping there. Next step, much harder. We need the helmet to fold a complete 180 degrees all the way up and land on the user's head. For this, I got some linear actuators and a hinge to bolt the two helmet parts together. Basically, these linear actuators use a little DC motor to convert rotational motion into linear motion. So I added a small one inside the helmet that will, in theory, pull the helmet up around and onto the head. I also added a lever piece sticking out to give us a slightly better mechanical advantage when closing the helmet. So I got the mechanics working like it was closing the back, but as soon as I tried the full weight of the helmet, there was absolutely no shot it was gonna lift that. So the helmet weighs about four pounds on its own. So you know, not too bad. The linear actuators are rated for more than that, but the physics are not in our favor. Like we're pulling from right up near the fulcrum. So the short distance of travel means we need some massive torque to be able to pull this. I was actually gonna measure the force required to pull this helmet up and over from that point, uh, but it turned out like, I couldn't actually physically do it myself. So there's no way a small linear actuator could do it. We're gonna need a better mechanical advantage. So I stepped it up and got a few of these. As you can see, they're the same, but much bigger. Cause I was thinking like, why do we need all the electronics packed inside the helmet? We're gonna have to have some sort of backpack anyways. Might as well just stick all the electronics in there. So my new design uses one actuator to move the helmet up and down, and then two more to rotate a plate that pushes the helmet up and around and onto my head. And I mounted everything to a full metal frame. You know, we ain't messing around anymore. Added a lipo battery, a few switches to control it, easy. Yep, and then that's just gonna drop down once I figure out that mechanism. Oh God! <laughs> well, kinda. Yeah, to avoid the helmet just slamming down on my head each time, giving me mild concussions, added a door dampener to the back of the helmet so it would lower the mask down slowly. And I also added some straps so we can wear it like a backpack. And I also added a quick release hinge to the helmet. So once it's on our head, you know, we can disconnect it and move our head around freely. I was also thinking about making like the whole backpack cover the helmet when we're not using it. I decided not to though, cause on its own, the backpack is pretty low profile. And I didn't want to make it look super bulky just to cover the helmet, cause it already looks pretty cool. So I just covered the wires, did a little bit of aesthetics and uh, left it at that. So now the last step is to add the light up eyes and heads up display. For the eyes, I'm going the standard method of using two LEDs pointed in at some plexiglass. So we can still see through it, but they'll glow just like Iron Man. But that's the easy part. Now we need to cram a pair of these high tech Vuzik smart glasses into the helmet. These glasses are super sick though. They've got an augmented reality display in the eye that only the user can see. So it looks like things are just overlaid over your vision. They've got a camera, they've got Wi-Fi compatibility and they run Android. So it's basically like having a smartphone on your face. So here's some cool stuff they can do. I'll try and record the screen and put it up there so you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing. Basically it looks like a screen about six inches big, maybe two feet away from your face. All right, so now we're recording the screen. So you can see this is the interface. We're just kind of swiping through all the apps here, uh, pop into the camera. That's the camera I'm filming with. This is what I see. So you can take pictures, record video, all that stuff. We've got Alexa on this thing. You can watch Netflix on this thing. But the really cool apps are the ones like the translation. So I can pop into this, which is uh, basically a universal translator. Scans any text, overlays it with the correct language. So I've got this sign, just says danger. Pretty helpful to know if you don't speak the language. Pop it right there, grab a picture. Boom, live translation right on the screen. Check that out. Pop onto this uh, translation app. Donde esta la biblioteca? Boom, where's the library? There's that sixth grade Spanish. So now we gotta put them in the helmet, which again was much harder than I thought. Like the issue was because we made the mask actually move already, there wasn't a lot of room for these glasses. The way these glasses work is they've got a tiny projector in the side, bounce the light into your eye off the special glasses lens. So I ripped everything apart and mounted that little projector right in the center of our eyes. So we got it in the center and then put the glasses lens over one eye so it could still project onto that. And I mounted all the other electronics onto the mask face. And now the last piece of the puzzle, myself. Like if I'm trying to play a genius, billionaire playboy philanthropist, I gotta look the part. Luckily the guys at Manscaped are helping me and you out with their performance package. It comes with the Weed Whacker, a really high quality ear and nose hair trimmer. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. They've also got the lawnmower for more below the belt areas. Like it's waterproof, it's got skin safe technology, which you know is important for those sensitive areas. 
definitely a top priority for Tony Stark. That man has no regard for lawn maintenance. You also got the luxury nail kit. Can't sleep on the nails kit. And for a limited time, you get these anti-chafing boxers and briefs and a travel bag. Yeah, I think Tony Stark would be all over this. I want one. We've also got the new Redefined Cologne Signature Scent. Perfect fragrance to top off the collection. You just can't ignore the quality of all this stuff. Can we get a replay on that? Tell me that's not super satisfying. So click the link below, manscaped.com. Definitely remember to use our code because that really helps us out. And you guys, because you get 20% off. Free international shipping, plus the two free gifts. Use the code JLASER. back onto the back, just like that. So now we got both light up eyes and a fully functional augmented reality display built right into the Iron Man helmet. It's a little hard to show you guys, but you can see right there is the screen. See it see-through, like you can see my hand in the background. So overlays the screen with your actual field of view. Got my phone right here, control it, or you can say, hello Vuzix, take a picture. And you see it opens up the camera app, I can see I'm waving my hand around the front. Take the picture. And it took the picture. And we've all the apps we want. We can just swipe through them all. Weather, all, just all this stuff we can use. I'm, again, I don't have time in this video to go through all the capabilities of this, but a lot of stuff this thing can do. Honestly deserves its own video. The point is, this is the most advanced Iron Man helmet I've ever seen, and it gets put on your head automatically. And you know, it's not perfect. Obviously, it's got its flaws too. This is the first version, so I definitely could have built it a lot cleaner. Some of the mechanisms get stuck, and like some of the controls are hard to work. Get it smoother. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh god. But for a first version, you know, full metal, super high tech, I'm pretty happy. I'd honestly like to know if you guys have seen anything more realistic, more high tech. Uh, I'd love to check it out, so let me know. And uh, once again, shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and making this build possible. Once again, use our code JLASER for 20% off. Drop a like and subscribe if you liked it. So that's about it. Don't forget the giveaway too, uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.